good. It's a new year. Isn't that amazing? We get to be at church on the first day of the year together. I love it. I'm excited about that. I don't know why. I just kind of, just that it fell on Sunday. It's very inconvenient. But y'all are here. Right? Uh, I'm just joking. Yeah. 2023. Well, what plans do you have? What things have you been thinking about? What's on your agenda? I finally finished last year's vision board about a, about a few weeks ago. <laughs> I could say last year. Um, but it, I finished it. Right. Yeah? I found the Mod Podge, got that on there, got it all, you know, and then now it's in my office, ready to go. But it took me a little longer because I was going to go bu- get more pictures. And sometimes we procrastinate, we put things off, which is, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but I finished it. You know, sometimes we're working on things. And we're working on things. And it might look like we might know where we want to be. And we're not there yet. But hold on. Don't give, don't give up. And that's kind of what I've been talking about. A year of renewal is the word that the Lord gave me for 2023 for this body. For our church. So in January, my van tag expires and I have to go get my inspection and get a new renewal. Every year in January. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a spiritual renewal an assessment of you, the real you, who you are. The renewal of what God has put in you. A renewal of your faith. A renewal of everything that he is, an all-encompassing God. Focusing back on that. Not the problems, not the setbacks, not the, not the, the hard times, not, you know, not what didn't happen, what, not what you wish would have happened a refocus, a recalibrating to renew me, my heart, my life, am I really trusting him? Am I really serving him? Am I really committed to God? And that's what I want to talk about today a little bit in this time of renewal. I remember hearing of this was one of the the big uh, outpourings of Toronto was renewal. And it was a time to really get, you know, make sure we're okay in here. Are we okay with God? And so I don't want to journey through this and find out that I wasn't okay with God at the end. Right? So I have a lot of hope and a lot of good, I mean, exciting things to talk about. Because this is a a passion of mine is to get people back into hope, back into, into what's real, what's true, what, you know, not what didn't happen. Those things hurt, and we, we recover from those, but we need to get hope again. We need to have faith rise up. So let's turn to Matthew. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Classic, uh, chapter 19, verses 23 through 30. Let's go there. I love that I don't have to bring all the Bibles up here anymore. All right. So uh, in the setting here, we're, we're looking about um, the rich young ruler. Uh, and um, in verse 23, where I'm going to start, it says, And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, it will be difficult for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man into the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard this, they were utterly puzzled, astonished, bewildered, saying, Who then can be saved from eternal death? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men, it is impossible. But all things are possible with God. Then Peter answered him, saying, Behold, we have left all that we have 
become your disciples, sided with your party and followed you, what then shall we receive? And Jesus said to them, truly I say to you that in the new age, and in that new age is actually one of the words is used as restoration or renewal. In the new age, the things in the place of where Jesus is, is the Messiah, where he will rebirth, he's rebirth of the world. When the son of man shall sit on the thrones of his glory and you who have become my disciples sided with my party and followed me will also sit on 12 thrones and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And anyone and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or lands for my name's sake will receive many, even a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. But many who now are first will be last then, and many who are now last will be first then. This time of Messiah, of the time of the kingdom of God, you know, the kingdom of heaven is on earth. The kingdom of God, he's going to have this new kingdom and this new earth where he, you know, he is the ruler supreme of all. We will inherit what we left, what he is taking notice of what you've done for him. He sees, he, he bottles your tears. He knows he is mindful of you. You are the apple of his eye. You are created. He breathed life into you just as well as the first Adam. You were known in your mother's womb. You are precious in the sight of your father. And I mean, he is so happy with you. He loves you. He's excited about you. There's a call on your life to follow him, to trust him, to not, to not just give way to the to passions of the flesh and, and, and just say, forget it. I don't want to do this anymore. No. There is an irrevocable call on your life. There's gifts and callings within you. And I want to draw that out for this new year on this first day. To say, wait, no, what, me? Yes, you. Yes, you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And it is a time right now to dare to believe God again. It's a time right now to dare to believe him for impossibilities, things that seem improbable, things that seem uh, uh, unrealistic. It's a time to dare to believe him in the middle of whatever the situation is, to look beyond what you see and go past that by faith and ask for it and get it. Not just, not just, oh, it's, it's, you know, not just let it flee from your hands. And so I'm saying this because I actually saw in the spirit, uh, <sighs> multiplication happening within your hands. Okay. And the multiplication I saw, it was simple. It was multiplication of things like food. It was multiplication of things like money. A multiplication of things that, that maybe you lost, that you thought, wait a minute, I, I, I don't need that anymore. But God is saying, don't give that up. So I saw within you people, uh, not big grandiose things, um, everyday things. I think of the, the, the flour that just kept, you know, and the oil that just kept producing everyday things within your hands. Right. And so asking God to 
provide and, and, and keep going the things within you that you need, that he was actually doing that in the little things, in the tangible way, that you could see and feel and know it was him. Because you need to believe him for even more. In the days to come, we're going to have to believe him and trust him for even more than just the now. Okay? So you're going to have to start stretching yourself. 2023 is a stretching of yourself, even in the little mundane things. Don't let those little foxes spoil the vine in your life right now. And take away and just, oh, give up. I give up. It's real easy to do. But I'm telling you with everything that I have to begin to trust him for the impossible. To renew your, to renew your commitment with him. Renew your, your, your spiritual time with him. Renew his calling on your life. Renew it. Talk about it. Talk, but I don't see it. Talk about it. The little places where maybe even your well-being has kind of dissipated, your overall well-being, maybe you've given up, maybe you've, you've, you've gotten sloppy, you've gotten, you've gotten your health maybe, you've gained a few pounds, oh God, <laughs> he's dealing with me. So where you've gotten maybe a little bit, I need each one of us to have a commitment to him in this seat. Son, to not allow his promises to go without regard. Regard them. Hold tight. Talk about them. But if I, well, I don't see it. Well, just keep talking about it because you'll forget. And so hold on to your confidence. <coughs> don't cast it off. Don't let go of your confidence. If there's one thing I felt was don't let go of what you know that you know that you know that you should be doing. If you're supposed to walk in love, walk in it with all you have. Don't just get angry so easily. If you're supposed to be generous, be generous with where you need to be. And don't without with be cheerful about it. If if you need to, whatever the Lord is doing, you you're gonna have uh, uh, divine appointments with 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 um, individual places like people encounters and 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 you, how you react and how you respond is it brings glory to God but it also is setting you up for the next level okay so this is a time the renewed I want I want to just renew that within you what do what is right because it's right let that fire come in you just because it, it's you know don't don't stifle it let it come, let it pour forth, let it, let that, let it just burn out whatever isn't right. Just don't, don't live with the, uh, I want to be angry, so I'm going to be angry. Let it go. Wouldn't it be better to be in right standing with God yeah. than to be angry? Because you feel like you have the right to, to love your spouse more than you ever have? To renew that, well, renew your marriage? Well, I, I'm mad because I have a right to be mad. Well, maybe you don't. <laughs> maybe you don't. Could we just forego that? Could we just say, you know what? Maybe I don't have a right. And I need, and I need to, to, to honor the Father, to honor the covenant of marriage, to honor the, you know, my own words. Right. I love you. Yeah. So we can violate our own words, I love you, with being angry. We can violate our the the law of love. So my my message for you today is to encourage you to not give in to disappointment. Yeah. To not give in to um what didn't happen. To give in to discouragement. You lose courage in discouragement. And so um, 
whatever you do, I don't want you to concede to that. To do that, to give in, to throw your hands up, to say, I don't want to, <laughs> is not an option right now. Because there's a, there, this is the time of deception. This is a time of, of uh, lawlessness. This is a time of, you know, I mean, we're living in a different year. But it's a glorious year. If we don't, but we're going to have to live a little stronger. We have to fight a little harder. We're going to have to be a little tougher. We're Texans, for crying out loud. So we got it. We, we, you know, so we have grit. We know what to do. And we have a deep, deep rooted faith that we can do it. Bring it, right? And so. It doesn't, the battle, if it's raging, this is what's important in here. Wow, this is. And so how do we keep this going? How do we not give in and then go to depression and, and, and fall out and get under the covers? And, and so uh, I'm expecting that we're going to have so many testimonies this year. I'm expecting testimony after testimony each week. And you're going to share those testimonies with other people so that they can be free, so that they can see multiplication in their hand, that they can see the hand of God actually working in the earth. Because that's what he, I mean, he's going to, I feel like he's going to renew you. If you've been dry, that's over. If you've been crusty, that's over. But that, mean, but that doesn't just happen without something happening. Okay, you know, I could I could want to not look ashy, you know, and have, you know, scaly skin, but I got to put some lotion on. I got to drink some water. We got to hydrate. There's some things I have to do if I don't want to look all ashy. Okay. Scaly for you white people. (laughs) Scaly. (laughs) So. In renewal, now remember, I told you I had this dream, and, and very rarely, I never have ever had a recurring dream, and I very rarely share those, but um, is it old men dream dreams or young men? What category am I in? I feel young, so I don't know. So I had a recurring dream that I had had a while ago, and I had mentioned it to you, and um and I said, I'll get back with you because I had to hold it for a little while. Let's see here. Um, I, so I wanted to uh, give you a, kind of an, a little bit more on that. There it is right there. And I'd had the dream three times, which had never happened. And um, I told you about uh, it was over about, you know, a certain amount of time that I had three dreams. And in the dream, on this arm was a patch of seeds that was in my skin, and it was, like, engrafted in. It was part of me. And there was another one here in this dream, and it happened. I, the first time I dismissed it, second time I thought, well, that's strange. The third time I took notice, finally. Sometimes we need a little extra help from the Lord. <laughs> and so I did, um, I did want to bring that, a little bit of that to you today in this time of renewal. And, um, and I wanted to go to the parable of the sower in Luke 8. In verse 4, we'll start there. But when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke a parable. The sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed some, and it fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, within it it withered, and it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked it. 
but others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears, let him hear. Ears to hear, let him hear. Do you have ears to hear? Amen. Then his disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said to them, To you who has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and in hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock and those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and they have no root, who believe for a while and in the time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who are have heard go out and are choked with the cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word, with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. So as I as I was kind of understanding like what so we've sow the word we sow the word each week we sow the word in our daily life as we do our devotional time as we we're sowing that word we're we're actually bringing that the word of god into our our, our minds to our to our mouth to our heart we're letting it change us we're allowing it to to penetrate in us right to live in us and that seed of that word it it it, it produces it has to produce. Seeds produce. They were God created seed, seed time and harvest to produce. So we can't expect that a seed there might be some seeds that don't, you know, lay dormant. There might be some seeds that, you know, they they're but most of them are going to produce. So as I just thought about the dream and how in within my fabric of even who I am is now the word of God, not the word that he breathed into me, but the word that I have read, it is actually one with who I am. That it has changed who I am. It creates results within my person because the word produces. Okay? That's how it can affect a cure. That's how it can help you heal. That's how, that's why those are the little things. I mean, that's just, you know, the word is powerful and alive. We don't just use it to get something like he, health or healing or whole. It, it, it just is. It just is health. It is just ability on man, woman, doing what we can't do by ourselves. That's the anointing of God. <clears throat> no water in the place <laughs> excuse me so the word of god is the most is jesus is his will he's mighty and it's at work in you and it's at work in me and we have to remember that. We cannot even at all for a moment think that we can't live without it. We can't do life without him. Not to the fullest. Not to the biggest extent. Oh, man. Don't you love cedar, Tom? My body learns how to recover from this every year so thank you Kurt um, so the seed is the word of God God's word is a seed plant it grow it do it make it real first Peter 
um, 123. Since you in, um, let me see. I'm going to actually go back a little bit. For uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 21, let's start there. For through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you were purified, your souls, in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of a corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. As, because all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man as the flower of the grass. And the grass withers, and the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospels was preached to you. So this gospel is not corruptible. It might be affecting your, you know, we're going to lose the flesh anyways. It doesn't matter. But the seed of the word of God is, is we're going to get a glorified body. We're going to have a new body. But at, for this time, we're seeing God at work in our hearts, in our lives, in what we're doing, in who we are, and what we're being to all give glory and honor to him. Renew yourself in him. Renew your commitment to him. Renew that, that, that what you thought, where you've been disillusioned, give it to him. And say, God, I, I, you know, but don't blame him. Don't blame him. He's the hope giver. He's the life giver. He's the abundant one. He is with you. And so I want you to just kind of, I just want to encourage you in that this, at this time. Uh, Proverbs 4.20 says this. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. And do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And they are health to all your flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issue of life. Put away, put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. And so that, what, a, what a great place there it, as sons and daughters of God to give attention to his word, to remind ourselves to give attention to his word. What does he say to do? Incline your ear to his saying. So this year in the bulletin you'll see, I didn't tell you to do a Daniel fast this year. I told you to hear and obey. I don't know what you need. I need veggies. I don't know what you need, okay? You probably need veggies too, but, I, I, you know, you need to incline your ear to his saying. You got to start to hear and obey because this is the season to hear and obey. You need to, I mean, I need to, we need to, because this is, this. we're going we to sharpen each other with this. We're going to sharpen each other. We're going to hear razor, razor sharp hearing from heaven. I believe you can hear God. I believe that you could know what God is saying to you for your life. I believe that he can direct you and guide you and, and, and help you fulfill the things that need to be done for this time, for 2023. And so from the ninth to the 29th, we are going to fast something. We're going to give something up or do something we haven't been doing. Okay? So you might have to give up YouTube for something. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? There's a balancing act going to happen here because you're going to incline your ear to his sayings. And, and so maybe that's listening to a podcast you haven't 
you know, that might be something different that you, when you're driving, instead of listening to Fox News, you have to listen to the, to something spiritual. Okay, so maybe, you know, it might be one or the, it's give and take, but you have to hear and be sensitive to your father in heaven to direct you what you need for your body, for your life, for your finances. We're going to be doing Dave Ramsey in, in, in February starting. And so maybe there's, there's some things that you need to do to get, to get, you know, saving some money you need to do to pay some things off, whatever it looks like hear and obey this year. Maybe it's cut back some things that you've been doing too much of. Hear and obey. And, you know, a lot of times the first people thing that people cut is like, is, you know, well, we need more family time or whatever. And that's a good thing. But don't get tripped up on the good things and not do the best things. Maybe it is time around the Bible. Maybe it's a camping trip to spend time, you know, not just the, not just the, the same old, same old, I'm going to quit volunteering here so I can have more family time, but then you just watch TV. So, you know, sometimes we do those kind of things and, and we, we justify it. And, and, and so, but what I want you to do is really examine and, and be mindful. There's only so many minutes. There's only so many days. There's only so many hours before the Lord's coming back. And we can be here next year, maybe, and have the next talk about, you know, 2024. But I don't know if we, any, all of us will be in this room in 2024. Either Jesus is coming, some of us won't, you know, some of us are, you are not all living forever. Right? So make them count. Make your days count. Fulfill the call of God on your life. Don't allow things to, 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 to steal from you. Um, 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Don't be so concerned about just, you know, what's happening out here in the world. Renew this. Renew that gets hope. Renew the inner man. Be mindful of, your, of you, the real you that lives forever, the eternal part of you. And, and follow and respond to God. That is, that is the part of the renewal. And, and today I just, if you haven't, okay, let me put it differently. If you want to follow God better in 2023, We're going to have to do things that we outside of what we've been doing. So I want you to stand up. I want you to walk forward. Yep. One of the things that God said for me to do with you is an impartation. And that doesn't mean I have to touch you. He's, he's good at what he does by himself. But coming forward to him, to allow him to impart something fresh, hope to stir you, to heal you, to abandon any disappointment of, and to let hope arise, to let faith stir from your feet all the way up to your head. You talk to God, infuse me with faith, bring me hope again, bring my prodigal back. Oh, bring the joy of my salvation, Lord. Help me trust you again. You know the secret places, Lord, even where I've wanted to run and hide. 
not be seen. You know where I've been, what I've been doing. I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse me. Renew a right spirit within me. I give you this anxiety. I give you the pain. I give you the hurt, the disappointment. And I ask you to fill me fresh. Impart right now. Ooh. What only you can do. I want to live for you, almighty God, my Father. I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, let me not be so dissuaded, disillusioned. Mm. Renew me right now. I want renewal that you spoke of that would happen for this church, that would happen for my life, that would happen. Mm -hmm. So Lord, just fresh outpouring of your spirit right now on your people, fresh outpouring of your spirit. Oh, revive them, God. Renew them. Bring hope. Just cry out to him. What do you need? You ask your father. It's a new year. Ha. Ah. ourselves unto your service for this cause you have placed your spirit upon us so we vow to take our stand to do your will to do God, I thank you so much. Oh, that you, oh God, you heal. Oh, and I thank you that today, that each one of these people here is healed, that they're saved, that they're walking in the fullness of what you have for them. You said you would give strength to the weary. Oh, and you would give power to the weak. And so, God, we arise today. Oh, with strength, renewed strength, with renewed vision, with renewed might, with renewed ability to go above and beyond all that we could ask, think, or imagine. And even if it doesn't look grandiose, God, we're going to stop and say thank you. 
We're going to stop and say that was God's work in my life. That he was my source. That he did it. Thank you. Grow us, God. Stretch us. We want to be completely dependent on you as our source. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the testimonies. I thank you for the, 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 the gl giving glory to you. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, we, we bless you. <laughs> oh, we bless you, God. We praise you. We bless you, Almighty God. We thank you for our new year, this first day. We say yes to your plan. We say yes to serve you. We say yes to seek after you. We say yes to, 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 to hope again. you that, that and, and even if it's yourself that have to be anything external it's this thing that I can do it the little engine that could right I think I can I think I can he said it and he did it and he got up that hill and he overcame let's do it guys let's do it for the Lord amen love you happy 23 Happy New Year! Woo! Amen. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, though yes. 